What a gift. What a gift to the corrupt that the liberals are giving them. The motion, so everyone should have it. So go ahead, Mr. Jory. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I wanted to open up by saying that we came here prepared. We came here prepared to, to discuss the um, outsourcing of contracts. It's been something that was uh, actually put on the list back on February of 22nd, 2022, and it hasn't gone anywhere. And it's good that, you know, we're, we're actually getting back to some business uh, for OGO. Um, it, it is a relevant topic. This is something that uh, uh, both departments and all the departments has been actively working on, and there are a lot of good stories as far as what the government is doing and uh, what the departments have been successful in doing. And the, the opening remark uh, talked about, uh, the opening remark by Mr. Mills talked about the, uh, all the initiatives that the government has done uh, to ensure uh, that not only they review, but they also put new policies in there. So we are ready. We are ready to have that conversation, yet we see our colleagues open up by um, wanting to do a deep dive on a um, case that's in front of RCMP, and they're trying to um, prosecute this case as uh, it was already publicized on, on the social media even before this meeting. So um, on, on that note, we would like to um, actually say, if it was about this, we would have, uh, we would have, uh, we would have, we would have engaged. But now that we are going down the path of uh, um, kind of playing the partisan game, no, we are, we are going to uh, take the, the 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 approach of uh, no meeting uh, unless it is emergency, uh, and for for the summer. And this is a path that's available to us, and this is the path that we are choosing to do. Had we not gone that down that road and not taken that approach, and you know, as you could see, um, we provided the list of all the speakers. We are all ready. We are ready to engage on that. We, we would have engaged, but not now. On that note, um, that's I yield the floor back to you, Chair. And that's those are the points I wanted to make. So we are ready. We are ready to engage, but not on partisan not during the summer, not for non-emergency, about the case that's in front of the RCMP. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Souza, the floor is yours. Uh, you can put your hand down. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Um, as was mentioned in, the la in that motion before um, we were assessed for the summer, um, it was clear that the will of the committee should prevail, and that opportunity wasn't allowed or provided for. And that's not been the case. And we've had a number of motions put before this committee to try to provide better decorum and some fairness in terms of how we proceed. And so I support this motion and I think some others do as well. And I say we move to vote on this issue and, let, uh, and let's stop being judge, jury, and executioner on some of these uh, other files. I understand the publicity, but there are motions or activities taking place to manage that process already. In this case, I'd rather us do our work in the constituency where I am right now and where I believe others should be as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I have Mr. Barrett, then Mr. Brock, and then Mr. Julian. Mr. Barrett, go ahead, sir. I'm not surprised, of course, Chair, <clears throat> that Liberal members of the committee uh, want to uh, try to cover up the uh, corruption and failures and fraud that has run rampant after nine years of, of their government. Um, here we have uh, departmental officials in front of us. We have matters that um, have been referred to the RCMP. But like so many cases, when we are uh, so many um, so many examples that we have uh, with respect to procurement, um, what uh, liberal members want is commercials about how well everything is going, and they don't want any accountability. We heard that about the uh, about the Arrive scam app. We, it was supposed to it was supposed to cost uh, eighty thousand dollars. It cost many orders of magnitude more than that, and they tried to thwart, they tried to shut down investigations at absolutely every single turn. We found out, of course, that um, it cost uh, $54 million, and that the contractors who worked on it, <clears throat> of course, 
have had uh, their front doors kicked in by the RCMP, and uh, we know now that it has uh, been just the the very top layer of the onion that is this Liberal government. After nine years of Justin Trudeau, all that they can do is try and shut down uh, these basic tools for accountability that we have. And well, I, I know it brings them uh, great pain to uh, step away from uh, from their back deck and their swimming pool. Um, we have important work to do on behalf of Canadians. I I, I know for for a certainty that um, folks in in my community. I know for a certainty that folks. In uh, in ridings across this country, 338 ridings, they want accountability for this corrupt liberal government. That's that's what they want, and they want it in the summer, not just when uh, when liberal MPs have um, you know uh, feel like th th they'll tolerate questions uh, from uh, from the public. So we have these officials here today. And I have questions prepared for the officials, and they're not allowed to answer our questions uh, during this uh, this uh, motion that's been put forward. That's a tactic to shut down accountability. We've seen it for uh, it's increased. Uh, it's increased as we've uncovered more corruption and more examples uh, of the the cover-ups that the liberals have tried to perpetrate. But. Um, my questions, uh, it's so interesting that they find, uh, they find them political. Um, how many cases of fraud have been referred to the RCMP? Uh, th there's nothing political about that. That question is, is Canadians have a right to know and they have an interest in knowing the volume of fraud that, uh, that is being perpetrated on the government. Canadians are lined up at food banks in record numbers. They're struggling to get by teetering on the brink of insolvency in record numbers. And what they see is contractors like the grifters at GC Strategies who were banking tens of millions of dollars and doing no IT work on IT contracts. And we've learned that it's just the tip of the iceberg. Ghost contracting, double billing, but these guys were doing, they were adding no value. We know now that there are contractors who were employees of the federal government who were being, this liberal federal government, who were being uh, used as, uh, as subcontractors because we were told the government didn't have the capability in-house to do it. Well, by virtue of the person working at the government, we know for the government, we know that they have the capability uh, in-house to do it. Had the RCMP contacted the Trudeau Liberal government regarding criminal investigations into consultants that were not referred by the government to the RCMP. I, I fail to see how that's a political question. But they don't, the, the Liberals don't want that accountability. They don't want that spotlight on the corruption that they're presiding over, on insiders lining their pockets while Canadians struggle. How many billions of taxpayer dollars does the Liberal government spend on high-priced consultants every year? That would be the question that I addressed to Mr. Mills, who's in front of the committee today. He's not allowed to answer because the Liberals are shutting down the questioning of these witnesses. It's more than $20 billion. $20 billion. And I could ask for a precision from Ms. Poulin who talked about the, uh, the percentage of fraud on, to on total contracting and to, and to extrapolate what the forecast would be for, uh, for opportunity for fraud or suspected fraud within the federal government, but I can't ask because the Liberals are blocking us from being able to ask questions. They're using procedural shenanigans to stop us from getting accountability for Canadians. So... Uh, the, the example of Miss Clara Visser, who um, has been charged, it's one of these consultants who's been charged for fraudulent building. We know that there's another three who've been referred to the RCMP. Canadians want to know how many more of these fraudsters and scammers are stealing 
Canadian tax dollars. So they see, Canadians see half their paychecks uh, vaporized by, by government, and they don't know how much of the money is going to cases where fraud and corruption being the uh, the fraudsters uh, being the beneficiaries of of uh, the taxes that have been collected from Canadians. How many government employees, Mr. Mills, are employed as consultants? Well, he can't answer me, Chair, because of the procedural shenanigans by the Liberals. We want to know how many government employees are are employed as consultants where we have the taxpayer paying twice to get the service one time. I fail to see what's political about that, except for a corrupt, tired government after nine years that is terrified, terrified of the accountability of conservatives, holding up a spotlight on the corruption they've presided over. And if and if the claim by the Liberals was that, um, well, uh, you know, we're, we're going to let the process unfold, we know that they, they voted against having the Auditor General investigate their ARRIVE scam. We know that. We know they try and block these. They're on the record. The Prime Minister, the Cabinet, the, the Liberal members of this committee, they voted against having the Auditor General investigate. So what interest would they have in Canadians not knowing about fraud and corruption. Well, it's because it's their buddies. These are liberal insiders and grifters who are dining out, lining their pockets, while Canadians are lined up at food banks. That's, that's why they're blocking it. On double dipping, my question to our witnesses is... That last year, under in an industry that's growing under this government, 79 cases last year, 84 cases this year of double dipping. That's people getting paid by the government and getting paid by the government to be contractors. How many of them are in a conflict of interest? And I and I hope that I hope that. Um, the, the witnesses that we have today um, will uh, take the opportunity to, uh, to make good note of my questions. Because the questions, um, uh, I maintain curiosity for myself and on behalf of Canadians looking for answers. And, uh, and though you won't be uh, formally asked by the committee to, to provide those answers, you of course could furnish those in writing uh, through the clerk to the committee because Canadians want to know. 50% of consultants being in conflicts. Do we know if any of the government employees who are double dipping are also suspected of any of the fraud or corruption beyond their conflicts of interest? So we have some who are in a conflict, that's been established. Have we established if there is also suspected fraud? Have they been cleared of allegations of fraud and corruption in those cases where the conflicts of interest have been identified? That's that's an important that's an important precision for 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 Canadians. We have an appearance of a conflict, okay. We have an actual conflict, okay. Well, is it is it criminal in nature, or is there alleged or suspected criminality? Well, Canadians want to know. It's not partisan. That's not partisan. That's what we're supposed to do here at the Standing Committee on Government Operations. That's the purpose of our, of our, of our role as parliamentarians. Twelve months of the year, including in July. We know that of the list of uh, consulting companies that PSPC has, has created, many of them don't execute the function. They don't perform the work uh, under the, the contract 
that they've received, like GC Strategies. And some of them just have two employees. So five of those examples. Solutions Moray, Inc. They have two employees, $78 million in contracts. Mesa Computing Incorporated, one associated member, $34 million in contracts. Mobile Resources Group, one associated member, $28 million in contracts. Access Corporate Technologies Incorporated, two associated members, $9 million in contracts. Hackett Consulting Incorporated, one associate member, $8 million in contracts. But the Liberals say talking about this is political. Why? Are they, are they connected to the Liberal Party? Are they collected to, connected to Liberal ministers? Are they connected to Liberal members of Parliament? Is that why it's political? Because my questions to, to officials aren't about Justin Trudeau unless, unless he's connected to those companies, which is, I, I guess, the contention of the liberals who are, trying, who are blocking us from asking these questions of the officials who are sitting, seating, seated at the table in front of us. What value did Canadians get from Solutions Moray Incorporated for $78 million? That's my question. What value did Canadians get from Mesa Computing Incorporated for $34 million? What value did Canadians get from Mobile Resources Group for $28 million? And what value did Canadians get from Access Corporate Technologies Incorporated for $9 million? What value did Canadians get from Hackett Consulting Incorporated for $8 million? So without officials being able to answer, having the officials muzzled by the Liberal MPs, we're just left to speculate on the, on the, on the value or the reasons for, for these contracts having been awarded. Is it because the minister directed that these, the, the, the PSPC minister directed that these companies be awarded these contracts? Are there connections between the Liberal Party and these companies? Is that why the Liberals are muzzling the officials who are before the committee today? We don't know. Because the Liberals are blocking us from asking the questions. We could, we could suppose that there are individuals who are perpetrating fraud on the government who's not, who's not delivering, not executing on their fiduciary responsibility to protect Canadians' tax dollars, who's not, who's not, who are not doing their job. And so we have grifters and fraudsters and scammers who are taking advantage That, if that is the, if the charge of the Liberal members is that that's too political, well, is it because you feel responsible for it? Because the Liberal government is responsible for its failures. It is responsible for, for the allowing the grifting and the fraud to run rampant. So I'd like to know from our witnesses today, are high-priced consulting middlemen still being used throughout the government? Has the minister done their job to stop the racket this from, from continuing? Now, if the answer was yes, the Liberals would, of course, want this, this questioning to go ahead. They'd want the officials to say, of course, the minister's taken strong action. But we're now left to see that they're muzzling the officials, departmental officials, 
because is it not true that at this very minute there are middlemen like GC Strategies just soaking Canadian taxpayers? More examples of people like Clara Visser who are perpetrating fraud on the government, picking Canadians' pockets. But maybe the minister doesn't know. So I would, of course, ask if the minister has been briefed on the value Canadians are getting for the hundreds of millions spent on the middlemen who do no actual work. Was the minister briefed? What was the date? Did the minister request it? Or was it offered by the DM or the ADM? And then if the minister didn't request it, or if the minister wasn't briefed, well, I would propose that perhaps we hear from the minister as to why, why they didn't take an interest. It's very interesting that instead of, instead of basic accountability, the Liberals immediately see it as a political crisis. It's, I think it's very telling. I think it's very telling that they see this as a political crisis. Is it because they can't handle any more crises? We know that they're, they're refusing. The Prime Minister is refusing to even meet with caucus, his Liberal caucus. But I don't expect it's because they're concerned about these issues or they'd have the opportunity today to ask officials questions and show their constituents that they're concerned about the cost of living crisis after nine years of Justin Trudeau and his inflationary spending. Because they're collecting more in taxes. They've raised taxes on, on the middle class that they've been very effective at shrinking. The middle class, not the taxes. The taxes grow, the middle class shrinks. But are Canadians getting more services for it? What's been the increased benefit to Canadians for the $20 billion? We know what the increased benefit's been for the likes of, of uh, Christian Firth and GC Strategies. We know what it's like for the scammers and the fraudsters who are stealing from Canadians. We know what the benefit is for them. No, no one was holding them accountable. Imagine the delight Imagine the joy on the face of the grifters, of the thieves who have been perpetrating their crimes, carrying out their crimes against Canadians, stealing thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars in individual cases, and then many of those cases to find out that the government operations committee, don't worry, they're going to stop asking the hard questions that have produced action from a government that was completely caught flat-footed, completely unaware, is the best case, that they just didn't understand that they needed to protect Canadian taxpayers. Worst case is that they're complicit. And that they're connected. And that they're more worried about the consulting class than they are about Canadians who work incredibly hard and see their earnings vaporized with inflation and see their paychecks more than halved in taxes, with taxes. What a gift, what a gift to the corrupt that the Liberals are giving them by attempting to stop accountability. Just count, you can picture it, you can picture it. They've got their countdown clock to 
to each break so that they can each each break in parliamentary proceedings. Well, the House isn't sitting upstairs, so there's no way committees could meet. Of course committees can meet. My constituents are well represented uh, if I'm in Ottawa for four hours. Does it mean I might need to pack a few more meetings into another day? Absolutely. But when I see them, I, I don't hear from any of them. You know, you guys have too many committee meetings in Ottawa. It seems like it's getting a little too political down there. You asking for, for uh, answers about all of that money that's hemorrhaging out of Justin Trudeau's Ottawa. You know what? That's not something that I hear from people. I hear that they're struggling. I hear that they want change. They want change by this government, and they want a change from this government. They want, they want a new government. But in the meantime, they expect that after the, the what would have been a devastating loss for the Liberals in Toronto-St. Paul's, losing a, losing a safe seat in Toronto, that there would see some kind of change in terms of their posture, their approach, that they take Canadians' concerns seriously.